Las Vegas, May 11, 2021. 28-year-old Terrell Rhodes is arrested on suspicion of murder. Authorities immediately began with what they thought was a standard interrogation. None of them could prepare for what Rhodes would try to do next. Realizing there was no possibility of escape, Rhodes would grab one of the officer's firearms while screaming, I'm gonna kill a mother How the situation unfolded will shock you. Just a few moments before, we can see Rhodes attempting to escape by slipping his hands out of his handcuffs. Luckily for everyone, this attempt would fail. But that wouldn't stop him from trying again. After all, the charges imposed against him were so severe, he'd do just about anything to avoid the consequences. So what exactly had Rhodes so desperate? And why was he arrested in the first place? Well, Terrell Rhodes was the primary suspect in a brutal and tragic crime. His then-girlfriend, Taylor Nicholson, was the mother of two-year-old Amari Nicholson. On May 5th, a few days prior to Rhodes' arrest, little Amari went missing. What's really sickening is that people is making assumptions, thinking that I have to, something to do with it, that I have her manipulated in some way, which that's sickening to me also, because he, he loves us. I mean, we, we had never do nothing like that to him. Rhodes' initial testimony was that a mystery woman had taken the child while Taylor, the mother, was out of town. He would later change the story and claim that it was actually Amari's paternal aunt who had taken him. Amari's biological father denied the claim, to which Rhodes rebutted, the father saying that his sister didn't come get him, and if that's really the case, then where's my son? Rhodes reported that Amari's aunt knocked on the door at approximately 6 a.m., stating that she was scheduled to pick up Amari and take him for the day. Records show that Rhodes had called Taylor at that time, according to him, to ask why the aunt had come. However, Taylor was sound asleep, so the true nature of the call is still unknown. Rhodes had convinced Taylor that they were being stalked by Amari's father, and that it was all a scheme to cut Rhodes out of Amari's life. When reporters asked Taylor what she thought about people blaming Rhodes, she responded as follows. Probably some rumors floating around. There's all, you can know there's all probably kinds of crazy talk happening. You know, people might start pointing the finger at your, at your boyfriend or maybe you. I mean, what would you say if that starts to happen? That to it's, it's inaccurate. It's a bunch of strangers just reading comments and not understanding the situation, not understanding the background and just trying to put their two cents into it when it's all inaccurate. All this negative, hateful energy of pointing fingers at me and him can be put in and can be put into trying to find our baby and bring him home. Unfortunately, Rhodes had manipulated her into believing this fabrication. The police, however, were unconvinced and brought him in for questioning. The police issued the following statement. During the course of the investigation, it became clear that the circumstances were suspicious. As you know, this case started out as a missing persons investigation. And unfortunately, I'm here to tell you today that it is now a homicide. After taken into custody, Rhodes finally confessed to the murder of Amari Nicholson. According to Rhodes, Amari had wet his pants several times, which sent Rhodes into a fit of blind rage. In this rage, Rhodes would accidentally end Amari's life. In a panic, Rhodes buried the remains at a nearby motel. During the interrogation, Rhodes drew a crude map that led to the exact location of Amari's body. With the map in hand, police officers found Amari's body the next day. It was at this point Rhodes knew there was no way out, so he made a desperate decision. At first, Rhodes can be heard sobbing. Then, suddenly, he lunges for the police officer's gun. Relax, relax, relax. 
Relax, relax. Relax. After being disarmed, Rhodes can be heard saying, I want to die and kill me. This incident shows the same impulsive and irrational behavior that led to the tragic death of Amari. In the end, Rhodes was charged for the murder of Amari, the attempted murder of the detective in the interrogation room, assault with a deadly weapon, and resistance officer with the use of a firearm. At his first appearance in court, Rhodes pled not guilty to the murder. The prosecutors decided to not pursue the death penalty. Instead, they'd go for life in jail without parole. As of May 3, 2022, Rhodes remains in the Clark County Detention Center without bail. The perfect place for a man that not only ended the life of a child, but lied to and manipulated an innocent mother before trying to take the lives of the detectives involved. It's getting difficult. You still see him running around. You still see everything. You still hear everything. And now we just got to live through what he loves the most to keep his spirit close to all of us. Man, that's real sad for the simple fact. He was up here telling all these bullshit ass stories about what happened to that little boy. And come to find out this motherfucker had a mental breakdown. A mental episode is what I'm going to call it, where he was probably going through something and he just snapped and lost it. You know, a lot of weak people, when they have these episodes, it's just sad to see the, the innocent people who are in their path of, of whatever rage and destruction they're feeling. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's just sad to hear that. Damn. Fucking little boy, man. And then for the simple fact, he did it because he was wet in the bed. That's what that's what they do until they learn to go to the bathroom and they understand their body and that's when they like potty train. So how could you even consider yourself some kind of role model or parent or anybody positive if you fucking can't handle a little kid Who's going to do those things, do those things repeatedly over and over and over till they get it right. And I'm sorry, but man, like she said, she can just feel him and hear him over and over like, like he's there, but he's not there. You know how heartbreaking and devastating I mean, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know, because that's just a hard. That's very, you know, bad to feel and to go through. But um, y'all just be safe out there and the people y'all have around y'all kids and around y'all. This story out of California is nuts. On Monday at this house in Pasadena, a grandmother was babysitting her baby granddaughter who was sleeping by a window. That's when a neighbor comes in off the sidewalk up the driveway carrying a giant pickaxe. The grandmother grabs the baby and gets away from the window as the neighbor with the axe walks up to the glass and starts swinging. The neighbor walks off as the grandmother screams, but she's not done with the pickaxe. She returns moments later to take out the rest of the windows. 
She makes her way down the entire porch. And when she's finally done, she leaves behind a warning. I'll be back! Get out! Police shortly arrested the neighbor at her home a few blocks away. The family is traumatized this happened to their house, but safe otherwise. The woman with the ax was apparently suffering a mental health crisis and may face criminal charges. A recent government report found our country has a profound mental health care crisis. The average American waits 11 years between the onset of mental health symptoms and treatment. Well, this goes back to where I was telling y'all about mental health and how serious it is. I mean, mental health is, is so serious and we never know what somebody could be going through. That's why it's always good to be nice, polite, you know, be respectful towards others as much as possible. And yes, we're going to be in our moments sometimes and be negative, but we got to be able to pull ourselves back into the caring and sharing and all this type of stuff because we only got one life to live and you can't let the demons and the negativity come into your soul and your body and make you get and act a way to it could possibly end your life and innocent other people's life. But like I, like I always said, mental health is real. It's something that we need to start talking about more and making it more aware of how important it is um, about life.